The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. But let me start by saying this. That the Possessing the Nation's agenda enjoins us to teach our members and to assess their growth and productivity regularly. Now, we are not going to measure uh, our church's strength just by statistics that we are so much uh, we have so many members but we need to look at their growth we need to look at their growth in terms of their productivity yeah make you more you so this is a cf a minor a yes here be kind you pardon do a war but christo mu name mom as a cf share a sorry man so one you need senior one you and i say one pen pen so you know a tf so our interest in the church it's not how many people are married. Show, show me your hands. But let us look at the kind of radiation that comes from their marital line. Now, our members are apprentices, and we need to examine our members' spiritual life, their moral development, as we observe closely how they are responding to the teachings that we are giving them every day and night. Now we are discussing family as an endangered institution. In respect to the possessing the nation's agenda, we are saying that if you want to take the nations, then let us concentrate on the family. Let me make this statement to begin our discussion. It is an understandable fact that marriage was instituted before the outset of Christianity. I hope it is an understandable fact. And I want every Christian to pay attention to this. That marriage is not a Christian ordinance per se. So marriage in and of itself is not a Christian ordinance. Not something that was ordained at the outset of Christianity. We are talking about Christianity. Then we are talking about Christ and his followers. But before Christ, Abraham married. Abraham was. Moses married. Moses so we are saying that marriage is not a Christian ordinance in and of itself. Now marriage was ordained for humanity. Genesis 2 from 18. Uh, Genesis 2 from 18. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. So the Lord caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. 
na enyankopon ewrade nyankopon de empade na oyiye no ebo oba na ode ne brɛ oberman the man said oberman can say this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman for she was taken out of man we eye me dompe me nompe mu dompe ene me huna mu hunam we wo be fere no oba if you say we yinu free oberman i wonder how he knew then me won won say eye den ene hu yi maybe adam was a prophet i don't know tima ka se bi an adam no you dey for that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh santi no barima be jane na ene na ja ho na ode ne ho akobata na yire na won be enu no aye honam so when you see that when god created eve she gave her to the man as the wife ohunu se o nyankopon bo eve ana oba no ode ne ma barima no so oyire not a sister I'm for now, man. So you are a wife. The man so I get away. The man who cries. Straight away. That was the beginning of this institution. We any our young sister I shall see. But this time, I'm so sorry. Even the devil had not tempted Adam yet. Now, what time for no? I must saw Adam in here. So marriage is the oldest institution, if you like. To back in here, our young aye in sister I now say to your point. And it is deeply in the plans of the Almighty God, and God hallows that one. Now we, and we nyami anju ni mu pa, and we nyami di oboni ni di esronko, and ma awariye. God wants us to live in this institution. We nyami pesi ya tina awariye. This is why a man leaves his father and mother, and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife. Were both naked, and they felt no shame. Tanti no bare man be ja ni na eni ne ja ho odi ne ho akobata ni re ho na wombe nu no aye honam kro na wombe nu no na wodi da de ja obare mano eni ne re na wani enwu. Now let's listen to Jesus. Umi enti e Jesus in Matthew chapter nineteen. Efiye Matthew asempano eti dun kro. I'll start from verse three. Chasi efi yimu mi ensano. Matthew nineteen from verse three. Some Pharisees came to him to test him. They asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? A Pharisee for Ban in chain, the son of her say, Obi a hookwine, a same guarantee, so Jan Irana. Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Look at Jesus quoting right from the beginning, from Genesis. Now, say na Jesus buya wong mungkin kain say free fiti asiano di obo ni pano oberi mane oba eno yo wong ena okan say yenti no ni pa be jane na eni ne jaho no di nwa kofam ni yero wong na wong ben no abe yongo namkro. Now you see, so Jesus is quoting from Genesis. Yes, or Kasasi means in the beginning it was not so. The Creator made them male and female. That is why a man will live and be united to the wife. So we are saying that. Adam married. In your chain is Adam or Cain married. Cain so are set married. Set or are Enoch. Enoch on so are. Noah. Noah ware. Unless you don't want to marry. I just say be a one person ware. Otherwise it is for you. And this idea ware oho e oho mu yenyina. Shall we bad our heads now? I want to pray for those who are not married. Say me bom pa ye ma won an ware ye no. And they desire to marry. Any o pa wo wa wo de ware. That God will grant them grace. To nyankopon be ma mu adom. Give us thy grace, Lord. Ewura de ma yen adom. I am what do give us thy grace, O Lord, thy grace we need.
our Father and our God, we stand on the basis of the word that your servant has released. And we pray for all those who are in need of marriage, from the north to the south, the east to the west, unto the entire globe. We speak favor upon their lives, that you open the heavens. Anything that is covering them, and that is preventing them from meeting their partners, may it be broken, O oh Lord. And may you who have sanctioned that it is no good for man to live alone, may your word speak for them. And may doors be opened unto them. And may they also find their suitable partners. We declare it done. Even in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let me say that if you don't want to marry, don't force yourself into it. Some do not, some are not just made to marry. And then sometimes circumstances also have not allowed others to marry. Don't let any pressure force you into it. But if you are praying and yearning for it, believe the prayer that you are praying. So if you are saying that marriage predates Christianity, then it stands to reason that one does not necessarily need to be a Christian in order to have a successful marriage. All married couples living by the rules of love and understanding can make successful or beautiful partners. However, in the case of Christians, um, our marriages become no ordinary union. It is a sign that speaks to the world now of the mystical union of Christ and the church and an institution whose first foundation is God himself. Ephesians chapter 5. 31, 32. For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So going back to the beginning. Then you this is a profound mystery but i'm talking about christ and the church so marriage speaks of the mystical union of between christ and his church therefore for us christians our marital life and family lives should should not only be successful but must speak of the goodness of god are we together when two christians walk to the altar to be joined in holy matrimony. See, heaven rejoices because their union is strategic. Heaven rejoices. Their union is strategic. And God expects from them godliness and godly offspring. Just like the prophet Malachi wanted backsliding Israel to know. Now, when Israel returned to 
from Babylon returned from Ezra to their land. They have lost a lot of steam so far as the air worship was concerned. But Malachi wanted to bring them back to the covenant of worship and all that they had to do for God. And I'm saying that when two Christians walk to the altar to join in holy matrimony or when you marry at home and your father or your pastor prays over it, it is married. You, you don't need to veil before God will bless that marriage. You see, when two unbelievers even marry, God is interested in the marriage. Because he instituted it before Christianity. So when, when there is a clerical pastor standing there or no clerical pastor standing there, once it is marriage, God is interested in it. Uh, maybe another time I will talk about it. When you don't have money, by God's grace, you perform the customary right. Even by law in our country, it is accepted. Just find a pastor, let them pray. And then... Take your wife home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just pray. Me when I when I <laughs> when I married, uh, I didn't have money for ref re refreshment. So and then one woman who was a leader by then said, uh, "We've heard that you will not have any reception." I say yes. And she said, then why do you want to <laughs> why do you want to do where you from? Now and make open you back up to be a minute can say Matisse Ubabe Ware and also Uniska or the better you have no and you're not person worry. And you see me to God help me. Right after the benediction, there was a heavy downpour, so everybody went to my <laughs> 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 I just ran away with my wife. <laughs> People, you disturb yourself in many things. I am I, I, I am today. And <laughs> mini. I married, I didn't have money for reception. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Now we just decide, maybe we are not teaching well. Maybe it is our fault. Otherwise, when you perform the customary right, it is accepted by law. Find any good pastor. Let them prove it. If you want an ordinance, then see what we can do. The law can permit us in many ways to give you even those certificates. So maybe. please, when you don't have money, don't wait. Marry as instead of burning. Maybe I'm not in church, you know, and I say, you shouldn't hear, say, Oba Modia, call your ban, why do you hear now? Or the no cobby beer was she said, no more since I'm crack and yard, you are so for now on Mompire and Gusso, Mawaria, no, no, and this Anna saw up a food in Nibia, and also obey to me, I am on crack and now, Wawari, Mummy and Fan, no more be brave, and she tree and It's good, a bro food, yeah. A bro for Mamma, yeah, bro, papa, papa. Okay, let's continue. So Malachi chapter 2, from verse 13. You did for Malachi, Homano, Etimienu, Enyimu, Dumienzano. Another thing you do, this is the prophet trying to bring the minds of the Israelites back to God and to true worship. You flood the Lord's altar with tears. You weep and will, because he no longer pray, pays attention to your offspring. Offerings or accept them with pleasure from your hands. Modi nu suo eni esuo egu onyango pon afori muchiaso na onyango na juu nse obeti mo esanse 
Modi or how near my near baby, a bamone and in term. Now, on yet my father, you know, if you ask why. Now, Mubi says a DNT. It is because the Lord is acting as the witness between you and the wife of your youth. Sanso Yankopon, I dance for a tiao, a war, and no man to bring a year in term. I have not seen any record of the Israelites marrying, and you needed to wait for the high priest to pray over it. But they were marrying. And once you have married, the Bible said that the Lord is acting as a witness. Who said Israel for Benu, a warrior, who wants to Yanko Pong, a Jina, one term, no mom, so what warrior point ye, when Yanko Pong, a dancer for? Yes. Verse 15. Has not the Lord made them one? In flesh and spirit they are his. And why one? Because he was seeking godly offspring. So guard yourself in your spirit and do not break faith with the wife of your youth. Na enye ba ko na onyankopon eye mo ne huna ene huhum na adentri e na na adentri a se mo be wo e ma nyamisuro nyamisuro e wo wo mo enti mo hwe mo huyie huhum no huhum. Now we all need to be careful to marry our spouses well. As I see in our chess, you be worry, you a hook up for you. What I like in verse 15 is this so guard yourself in your spirit. I may pay away you would do no pan, I say, show who ye and I'm only a show you who ye need to hallow the marriage relationship. As I see you born in the day and my worry, and she said, therefore, we need to guard ourselves in our spirit. And we see, as I say, you show you who ye away your home and do not break faith with the wife. Or the husband of your youth. Na yan say a young kufa e da yang any yam ranti brim yere anakunu and sixteen says I hate divorce. Dunciane say mitani awari go says the Lord God of Israel. Radi Israel Yanko Pona Osi. I hate it. Bichri. Now see Malachi's contemporaries. Malachi in fifth word. Were distressed because God refused to accept the offering. Offerings. As evident by his withheld blessing. And so Malachi the prophet explains that God was acting as a witness against husbands who were unfaithful to their wives. Before Malachi three, we say we know the scene on the scene. Now, what does that mean? Or what does this mean? That the relationship between husband and wife is more than a commitment between two people. Malachi is saying that marriage is a covenant. A three-way relationship in which the couple is accountable to God, who acts as a witness. Who God who acts as a witness in the covenant. And this is for whosoever enters into the institution of marriage. Now we See, covenant in the Old Testament entails four essential components. Okay. Number one, especially in the instance of marriage, it is a relationship with a non-relative that involves obligations now we know as soon as do a womb and it is established by oath or a sign and what you know you didn't see it and i said it'd be a so so the marital covenant is a relationship with a non-relative that involves obligation now we know and she said a womb and it is established by oath or vows or sign now when i'm in cd and i say and tamka 
And then please listen to this. God has the spiritual dimension to the marital life. So say God is the witness to the covenant. If you allow him in into the marriage, he is part of it. He is the witness. When you allow him into it, you will bring transformation to the marriage. The power to transform the marriage is in his hands. Now from what we read in Malachi, we, we also see that spousal fidelity is inextricably linked to spiritual well-being. Now, spousal fidelity is inexplicably linked to spiritual well-being. You watch, look, watch marriages. Couples that click. You, you see that God prospers them. Marriage must be a good repair, or else the couple's prayers will be hindered. Now, first Peter three from one to seven. First Peter one. First Peter chapter 3, from verse 1 to 7. Now, wives, in the same way, submit yourself to your own husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. The behavior of their wives. Tara na mo e yirenom. Momre mo huwa se ema mwara muknunom. Na se ebinom entie asem non soa. Wafa e yirenom abraba. Now let's project the verse 2. And shall we read together? When they, now wait, wait. When they what? See the purity and reverence of your life. The, when the men or women see. When the men or women see. Now, verse 3, let's read verse 3 together. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyle. Man, whoa. <laughs> there are some women, when you see them outside, see, hey, this is a beautiful woman, but the husband does not like her. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you see her with elaborate hairstyle and some walks and some beautiful body, but the husband doesn't like that alobo jata. <laughs> The husband is not fearing the hairstyle. The husband is fearing what, what has been dressed like that. <laughs> that is what the husband fears. <laughs> <laughs> Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewels or fine clothes. Of course, he's not suggesting that go out naked. That is not. But it's a rather, instead, it should be that of your inner self. That is what the man is actually worried about. The unfading beauty of a gentle, quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Now, you come, a dear, and prom, and no, 
For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves. This is the way they used to adorn them. Holy women and holy men used to clothe themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands and let me say to their own wives as well. Like Sarah. I mean, I don't think that anybody could be it, well, is that submissive than Sarah. For him, whatever the man will say, yes, Mira. Did he say, Senia, Sarah, Bren, who say, Emma, Nukunu, na Esun Kokraha? I'm not saying that the women that they don't have a say. It is it, it is it is a union. And the two of you, we have to humble ourselves one to the other. It's not only the women who must submit, the men must also submit to good ideas coming from their wives. In Pesa Michrese and Sese Obano Ekasa, Nemum as a set a fenuni na wa brebre wonhuase and mema wonhu. Very important. Number seven. Tosun son. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. <laughs> Now, from Malachi, we also see that though there is a generational blessing, generational blessing is guaranteed if the entire household is brought into the union. That is the man, the wife, God. And if you bring the children and the entire household into it, you are sure of generational blessings. Then you do for Malaki Tre and Natcha say, I worry away a wa I want to a swan shira, see a bomb or day say I do okunu no yere and if you pump for nina a be baware anymore. Now God expects godliness and godly offsprings from the union of those of us who are born again. Yeah, when you pon air fiano, eh, when you some pa, and no more fra what it won't eh when you are mis Ah, so be free, our room, our now, this is exemplified in the life of one Jonathan Edwards. He lived just for 55 years between 1703 and 1758. Jonathan Edwards, probably one of the best clergymen that the world has ever known. He and the wife Sarah bequeathed godly legacy to 11 children. Eleven children and future descendants. Edward's example teaches us that living a godly legacy to our children should be our ultimate goal as Christian parents. You see, at the turn of the 20th century, one educator and a pastor, A. E. Winship, decided to trace the descendants of Jonathan Edwards almost 150 years after Edwards had died. Beye in Frisia or ha any dunumwa papei and as Edward Diwiano, Papebi and so as you share na bra bom be in Frisia or ha e chemino na nya uhuniano na and one way pa. These findings are astounding. Jonathan Edwards legacy includes i want to list some of them 
Now, this is the descendants. I just talk about the social ladder they climb. After 150 years after the man had gone to be with the Lord, one of his descendants have become U.S. Vice President. Three U.S. Senators. Three governors. Three mayors. Thirteen college presidents, like VCs, vice chancellors. Thirteen judges. Sixty-five professors. If you move in, you say, "Muma kuma ko ediosi enum ebeye adisya mu ekunini." Eighty public office holders. Na emu makuma ko edio watchi. Hundred missionaries. Na ushemwa na emoha ebeye asempatre eduma efo. See, I'm not enthused about the high social ladder they they climb. Pe we no mabrabo a wabo eni abodi ya udwa wenyi ya wabo abrabo mno eno nyi mi wawa dodo. I'm saying they climb because we are just talking of 150 years after his death. So by this time the the offsprings are still climbing. And so because of the foundation they stand on. Number two. The foundation they stand on. Next week, I will take time for us to look at the foundation Edwards and the wife built for their descendants to stand on. Then we will encourage ourselves to build strong Christian families. We will be possessing the nation. When we start possessing our home. Shall we just rise to our feet if you okay. can? And let us close our eyes whilst we pray. What have you heard? What did the Almighty tell you? Let's close your eyes. Then go into the recesses of your heart. If you are married, is your marriage a witness? Of the goodness of God. If not, let us pray God into it. Let's ask God for wisdom to take practical steps to build strong marriages and beautiful families. To his own glory. He is expecting godliness and godly offsprings from you. So that our children will be will not be armed robbers. Street children, not at all.